A high salt diet has long been connected with cardiovascular disease. Now I should say a high salt processed food diet has been long linked with cardiovascular disease. Salt has kind of gotten a bad rap, but it's kind of deserved. But here's yet another reason why too much salt might not be too good. Too much sodium in the bloodstream causes fluid retention, which makes the heart work harder to move that extra volume of blood. This can stiffen those blood vessels and lead to higher blood pressure, stroke, heart attack, and kidney disease. This is the reason why high blood pressure is often ca called a silent killer. However, a recent study shows a high salt diet also raises blood pressure by damaging healthy gut bacteria. That's a kind of a weird connection, right? This destruction increases the inflammation that contributes to high blood pressure and the development of autoimmune disease. This is when the immune system attacks tissues in the body. Common autoimmune diseases include Hashimoto's, hypo hypothyroidism, multiple sclerosis, psoriasis, lupus, RA, and many, many others. Now you might be asking, well, why does salt do this? Here is a very simple visualization. Have you ever poured salt on a snail or a slug when you were a kid? Yeah, not very nice. And you remember what happened, right? Yeah. So there was a particular study that was done on mice. And this study shows that mice fed a high salt diet killed off beneficial lactobacillus marinus. This is bacteria in the gut. It also raised blood pressure and activated pro-inflammatory immune cells. Not a good thing. The mice also showed signs of encephalomyelitis. This is an autoimmune condition similar to multiple sclerosis, MS, in humans. Now when the mice were given supplementary lactobacillus, their blood pressure and inflammation came down, which is good. Now in the human study, the humans experimented with similar results. Consuming a high salt diet for two weeks killed off lactobacillus bacteria and increased inflammation. However, if they took probiotics for one week before starting a high salt diet, their lactobacillus levels and blood pressure remained normal. Nice and even. That's some pretty cool stuff. So can gut microbes protect against a high salt diet? Yeah, kinda. While the study showed probiotics can protect a high salt diet, the researchers cautioned that taking probiotics cannot protect you from the damages of a high salt diet and fast food diet or a very high salt diet. So don't go there. So manage your salt intake with good daily habits. While the average American consumes a whopping 3,400 milligrams of sodium a day, the USDA, which is still pretty high, recommends no more than 2,300 milligrams of sodium a day. This is about a teaspoon of table salt. Again, still a lot of salt. However, some people are more sensitive to the effects of salt than others. So it's recommended that middle-aged or older adults should limit intake to no more than 1,500 milligrams of sodium per day. So adopt these habits to lower your salt intake. Read food labels, choose foods low in sodium, eat more fruits, fresh fruits and vegetables, consume foods that are rich in potassium, such as green leafy vegetables, and fruits from vines. Potassium can help blunt the effects of sodium on blood pressure. The recommended intake of potassium for adolescents and adults is 4,700 milligrams per day, 4,700. And in case you're wondering, no, you don't get that much. Well, most of the U.S. doesn't get that much. So eat more, more of those, not just more. And if you're on certain medications, then you may need even more potassium. So flavor your foods with pepper, herbs, spices instead of salt. Choose unsalted snacks with savory flavors. So the moral of the story is to build good gut bacteria to protect your health. The digestive tract is home to roughly four pounds of gut microbiome, your bacteria. Some strains are helpful, some are harmful, but both have roles to play. It's important to support the good bacteria for healthy immune function, brain function, mood, 
and to avoid leaky gut, SIBO, small intestinal bacteria overgrowth, and systemic inflammation that leads to autoimmunity and many, many other chronic health conditions. And remember, when you're taking probiotics, it's not just how many probiotics you take. It's how many different types that you take that is equally important. I recommend for most of my patients to switch the probiotic that you're on to different brands, different strains, different strengths, every two to four months to increase gut bacteria biodiversity. So here's some easy habits to support a healthy gut with pretty simple habits. Again, always easier said than done. So simply said, here you go. Eat plentiful and varied foods. This is the best way to support a healthy gut environment. Supplement with probiotics. There's a lot of different ones, including spore-based ones. Check out some of the links in the description below and my post on my homepage. They do work best in a gut environment that's already being supported with plenty of fiber from fruits and veggies. Avoid excess sugar, which feeds the bad bacteria. Get regular exercise. Drink plenty of filtered water, not dead water, not distilled water. Another blog post. Now, what if you have low blood pressure? So I have another post on this and check that out. It's called uh, the dangers of low blood pressure or something like that. It's probably the most low budget one blog, you know, vlog that I threw together and um, it's actually probably the most viewed. So check it out. So adequate, adequate blood pressure is necessary for pushing blood carrying oxygen and nutrients into your tissues out of your blood vessels. Chronically low blood pressure can result in reduced brain function and neurodegeneration such as Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's, tremors, brain fog, memory issues, whatever you want to call it. This low blood pressure is often a sign of chronic stress, adrenal fatigue, autoimmunity, or some sort of chronic infection. So if you have that, you probably want to see a doctor, a functional medicine doctor. If you have low blood pressure, you need it up as close as you can get to 120 over 80. Salt can help raise blood pressure, while a high salt diet is not recommended for most of the population, people with chronically low blood pressure may need to consume more than the recommended daily amount of salt. It is a matter of your experimentation to see what level of salt intake is appropriate for you without raising symptoms of inflammation. Without raising symptoms of inflammation. Glyceriza. Glyceriza is a great, great supplement. This is extracted from licorice root. This natural compound increases the hormone aldosterone, helping to retain sodium and raise low blood pressure. You can use a liposomal cream version or an oral licorice root extract. When you work with salt and glyceriza to raise your blood pressure, you need to purchase a good home use blood pressure cuff. You can get them in the link below, you can get them at Walmart, CVS, Walgreens, whatever. You need to measure your blood pressure throughout the day, multiple times throughout the day, and experiment with the dosages. A return to normal blood pressure typically results in a dramatic increase in overall energy, brain function, brain fog, all that stuff. So the moral of the story is, if you salt your foods, take your probiotics. Unless you've got gut issues, bloating after eating, dysbiosis, parasites, SIBO, small intestinal bacteria overgrowth, and probably some other things. So it'd probably be a good idea to talk to your functional medicine doctor. So I'm Dr. Craig Mortensen. Be healthy, be happy. See you next time.